Hello, I'm Vivian. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I have to put the glasses on to read, so so hard than that. that I hate the glare. But this one is this video is on food sensitivities. Um, I hate I don't like using the word allergies because it's not like you know when someone's allergic to peanuts and it can actually kill them. They have to keep an EpiPen and their throat will close up and they could die. I don't have that issue with any of the things I'm going to list as things I am sensitive or my body is intolerant of. What's sad is at the time that I had this blood work done, many of these foods were daily uh, things. I thought they were healthy for me and for most people they are. And I had this blood work done um, in uh, I guess September and I was a um, went to my regular doctor's lab and they drew it and a friend of mine was working for this company that did um, brendanbioscience.com and it's about food. I'll put a link to their web page if they're still there. This was uh, eight years ago and they tested let's see over a hundred 134 items was tested from the blood work that was I was able to send in. They, they sent me a whole packet, um, the vial and the return package along with the thing I was supposed to freeze and you know, send with it overnight. So it was all done. Um, it was, my insurance covered it. I had a friend that was working for the company and uh, she made sure that it was pre-approved before I went and had this done. So it didn't cost me anything um, directly. Okay. And they tested a lot of stuff. And the things that came back positive, I avoided for five weeks, eliminated them from my diet. And in fact, I was eating a lot of stuff that wasn't tested because of the, my Korean diet. So like they didn't test for squid, okay? And it's one of my favorite foods in different forms, dried squid, squid cooked in different ways. And I know many Americans are going, ew, squid. Well, it's what I grew up with. So if you knew what was all in your hot dogs, you'd really be grossed out. So, um, it, te it tested a lot of uh, normal foods and along with things like aspartame and baker's yeast and uh, different beans. But I came back positive as having a sensitivity to uh, bananas, uh, blueberries, broccoli. At the time I was sprouting broccoli seeds and eating broccoli sprouts almost daily. Um, uh, casein, the milk protein, uh, it's also in goat's milk even though we went to goat milk cashew nuts, chili pepper, okay, that's one I've kind of like um, put a blind eye to because I'm Korean. Chili pepper is in a lot of our food. It's in kimchi. Uh, there's some kimchi you can make without chili pepper uh, called white kimchi. It's not hot. It's more like a pickle. Um, but that's one I've never completely eliminated ever for any long period. So I think it, during the five weeks I did minimize that, but I don't think I completely eliminated it. Cow's milk, definitely. That, that one showed up as like, it had a graph of all these things and that one's like way up on the top of the line. Uh, duck, which I rarely ate. I didn't understand that. Um, egg, albumin from chickens. So flounder. Oh, I forgot about the flounder. Honeydew melon lemon, lobster, no, no biggie, uh, millet, I don't, I don't, maybe it was in some of the processed foods, but not, oregano, pecans, peanuts, and peanuts definitely, um, I mean I've known that, I love peanut butter, I would sometimes do a scoop and on a spoon and just eat it off of the spoon, uh, but I was always burp. And you know, you kind of get taste it for a day or so afterwards. Uh, pecans, that was kind of sad. Salmon, salmon. I was making uh, from canned salmon and fresh salmon, and it's, it's one of my favorite sushis. It's sashimi. Shrimp. Uh, I've learned, oh, I'll talk about the shrimp later. Uh, tomatoes, trout, tuna, wheat, and whole wheat. They have wheat and whole wheat separate. Um, so I went five weeks. And the first week I was still eating some Korean, you know, like a squid and stuff, and I decided, oh, to, to do this correctly, maybe I can 
only eat the stuff that I, that didn't show a reaction from the blood test. So, you know, strawberries, squash, spinach, soybeans, sole, sole, and flounder. I thought were anyway. Uh, snapper, sweet potato, swordfish, tea, turkey, turmeric, uh, watermelon, zucchini, um, grapefruit, not good for the thyroid, um, coconut, clams, cinnamon, cauliflower, not good for the thyroid, uh, beet, beef, uh, different uh, types of beans, not good for the thyroid, uh, artichoke, I love artichoke, anyway, Steamed, pickled, marinated, uh, canned, almonds, uh, cantaloupe, carrots, catfish, uh, cherries, chicken, codfish, coffee, woohoo, um, cacao, uh, crab. Yeah, I'd rather have crab than lobster any day. Snow crab, ooh, blue crab. Uh, gelatin, ginger, gluten. Gluten came up okay. It's not gluten that was on my blood work, but wheat itself. So, I allowed myself to eat only what was okay from this blood work after the first week. So, I go five weeks. It's right before Thanksgiving when I, I knew I, I was going to go back and eat whatever um, at Thanksgiving. <clears throat> so trying to reintroduce it's like the worst one was milk okay I can see that I am half Korean uh, Asians have a hard time with uh, lactose so but I love cheese I love dairy I love yogurt I was making my own yogurt I was making my own buttermilk I was making you know, all this other stuff with dairy so uh, I introduced that I didn't notice anything I didn't feel bad uh, so, you know, wait a couple more days, see if any sort of reactions, because sometimes the reactions will take two days before it shows up in your body. So from skin, you know, eat, eat too much, I eat a little bit of chocolate, it's fine. I eat, binge on chocolate, I break out like nuts. Um, so, uh, then the next thing was, um, I was out shopping, and I mentioned in other videos, I weak when it comes to Chick-fil-A sandwiches. There's something about that bread and the chicken and the pickle, slice of pickle in there. It just hits the trifecta. I mean, taste bud, orgasms. It's just, I love that. You know, it's, and I know, I, I, I say I'm a foodie. Uh, I have some very snobbish things when it comes to food and food quality, but that Chick-fil-A sandwich hits something dead on. So, I get that on the way home I'm starving I'm just like really hungry it's like oh, okay I'm gonna try it's you know it's bread breaded chicken breast pickle that you know it's like so on the way home you know I go through the drive-thru I get a sandwich and I'm eating driving down the road 20 minutes later I am doubled up almost in tears and pain because my stomach is cramping I mean it's like I mean it just felt like someone reached inside me and twisted everything inside of me. I was hurting so bad. Oh, I was just like, okay, I got like 20 more minutes before I can make it home. I'm, I am, oh my gosh, this, this wheat thing is not uh, to fool around. I mean, it, it, it was very, very painful. And since then, this is, you know, 2010. Since then, I've learned the longer I go without any sort of wheat, the more severe my reaction is. I mean, I will be in that kind of pain. So having just a little itty bitty bit of wheat, which is not hard to do. It's in soy sauce, people. It's um, uh, trying to get people to understand that soy sauce has wheat and other stuff in it now. Now they're getting a lot more uh, trying to accommodate the American palate. Soy sauce is not all soy. It's, it should be. That's the way um, uh, Manji's video, and I've got a video on making soy sauce, that um, it's all soy sauce and salt. Salt, water, and soybeans. Extract from a soybean brick, you know, uh, or wafers as I did in the video. So I'm going to do, I have to get back to that. I'm uh, 
tamari is what I use. But going out to eat sushi, um, I'm going to have to start taking my own bottle of tamari because um, it's, uh, you know, it's got wheat in it. But that little bit that I'm exposed to keeps me from having a huge reaction. But then again, it never allows my body to completely heal from the effects of wheat. And I also found that when I do, um, you know, during the holidays, uh, we, we get invited to other places and people bring food, you know, cause, uh, people don't want to come empty handed to Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. They want to bring something too. That's fine. And, um, I'll eat. And if it has flour in it, I'll eat it and I'll pay, I'll pay the consequences. I know that I'm going to pay the consequences. And, um, oftentimes it's my fingers get stiff and, and painful. Uh, my left knee in particular, going up and down any sort of steps, it becomes very uncomfortable to very painful the longer I do the wheat. When I stop the wheat, the pain's there for two to three days afterwards, depending on, I'm not sure of all the variables it depends on, but it, that's what it normally takes. Because uh, I know the, you know, it's like, oh, I can go up and down the stairs and there's no pain. So um, that's how long it takes for that stuff to get out of my system but someone else was telling me it normally takes 30 days total to really eliminate everything from not just your digestive tract but just from your whole body being reacted to something like that so um i know some i have a friend who has who has celiacs it runs in her family uh she's gone back to eating wheat because her lifestyle just got too too um, stressful I guess and other things going on and so she went back to it she lost a lot of weight when she eliminated it because a lot of the weight it's just being swollen so now she's back on it and I can, and I can tell you know and it's just like oh, my eyes are like the more I, I'm, I'm not being disrespectful because I am part Korean but the more slanted my eyes look the more puffy I am the more I've been eating stuff I shouldn't have been eating and yeah, there should be a little slant to them, but not that much. So, uh, I've known this for now uh, almost eight years, and it's something that I've um, uh, had to uh, address. And oh, there's something I want to share. I couldn't find it. It's called The Plan, it's a book. Um, I'll link it to the Amazon thing so you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it talks about uh, the healthy foods that may be still making you sick. And it's not a diet, uh, weight loss diet book per se, but it helps you identify foods that may be causing you problems. And it requires weighing yourself every, at a certain time every day. So you stay consistent. So I, I weigh myself after I wake up, I like to go use the bathroom, and then I weigh myself. And I always wear the same things when I wear myself, so that's not um, playing in any of it. So, um, like the shrimp, I said, I'll mention about that. When I eat shrimp, whether it's a small quantity, just just a little bit on the side of some dish, or it's a main dish, you know, um, the next day I'm at least five pounds more. It causes a swelling, an inflammation. It's an inflammatory reaction that my body has when I eat shrimp. So. I know when I eat shrimp, the next day I'm going to be at least five pounds more than I was that morning. Uh, I found that if I eat freshwater shrimp, farm uh, farm raised freshwater shrimp, I don't have that reaction. So it's kind of weird. I don't think it's iodine that's um, that's causing that because I do have iodine in my diet, and oh, I eat a lot of seafood and seaweed. So that's not it. But the shrimp definitely. But it um, the plan helped identify um, it will help you identify it was really interesting uh, it's a good read and they mentioned um, which was really eye opening for me was um, you can eat most people it's rare for someone to have a reaction to chicken chickens usually a safe food for everybody most people and so is rice white rice uh, it's a safe food but they uh, in the book they talked about people having a reaction to chicken and rice soup and doing some additional, you know, just information comes my way. And um, I, I store things and my brain works and I, I, I put things together that, that some people may not see the connection, <laughs> but I do. 
and a friend of mine was talking about how when you cook carrots with meat that it can cause a problem and I was like yeah carrots and chicken and rice soup normally people put carrots in their soup so um, the book just went into the, even though that those are safe foods sometimes a combination may be an issue and there are certain things that will come up <clears throat> so um, almonds came out okay on the uh, blood work that I had done so I got to making almond bread. I was like making pretty decent almond bread. And I was, um, the almond flour was ridiculous. $11 for a pound was when um, I first discovered almond flour. So I was like, I'm not paying that. I can buy three pounds of whole almonds for that almost the same, just 12 bucks, I think. So uh, I was like, okay, so I'll take a pound. I, I blended it, made flour, my own flour made almond bread. It was really good. My son ate it up. He was like, this is really, it's better than regular bread. And we snacked on raw almonds. Um, I don't get toasted. Uh, I got some chocolate covered almonds for Christmas and I can't really eat them because I found out that I had a reaction to almonds later after eating almond bread for a while. And one of the, you, you, there's different reactions you can get. Definitely stomach cramps will tell you that something's wrong. Uh, the inflammation, which may not always be um, noticeable unless you're weighing yourself, going, okay, because when you're as tall as I am and as heavy as I am, two or three pounds is not going to make a visible difference. Five pounds won't make that big of a difference. I can tell in my eyes, in particular, that's why I keep referring to them, because I can tell when my eyes are swollen. Uh, puffy looking, just, just like, anyway. So uh, those are some obvious reactions, but there's some other reactions that you may not realize that, um, that you need to look out for. And the book, the, the plan is really good about identifying different things you should be aware of so you can create your own diet plan to eat healthy for you. Not me, not someone else, not per another book, but for you. So you, you're, it really helps to make your own diet plan. And I wish I could... I may have loaned it out. So, <clears throat> uh, that's a real good book, but I had almonds uh, and we were snacking. And next thing I was like, I was out with my husband. It was, it was a good, it was a beautiful day. Um, and he just, everything he said irritated the heck out of me. I was not PMSing. It wasn't anything along that line. And it was like, I was just getting infuriated with, Thing that we were at Chick-fil-A. I was like, yeah, happy place for me. And um, I, knew, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll pay the price, price for this. But it was like, oh my God, what was that? And um, and I knew enough. It's like, okay, he's not really, he's just being himself. He's not doing anything different. But it, every was, every, everything was getting on my nerves. It wasn't just him. And normally I'm, I'm laid back in a lot of ways like that. It's just like, you know, people can be themselves and I can, you know, insults off, you know, don't bother me and stuff like that. So it's like, and I realized it was the almonds. So I, I waited a week and I, I did, I, you know, I, was like, I wish I could do a, uh, a double blind where I'm not, I don't know exactly what I'm eating. Someone else is feeding me. I've been trying to get someone to do that for me and it's not, no one's volunteered and I can't pay anybody. I don't have a job. Okay. So, um, a paying job that is. Uh, I have many jobs but nothing pays me. So um, I, I did the almonds a couple weeks later and sure enough that same reaction came back and it wasn't something I can just easily uh, stop when you know when everything starts irritating you it may not be all those people around you it may be something you ate or drank so uh, keep that in mind that's that's also one of the possible um, reactions your body's having and because it's, it's meant it's affecting your mind um in all sorts of ways when i have wheat it's so common for me to just get up and walk into the next room and go why did i just come in here it does not happen when i don't have it i, I mean i i thought i was a ditz for most of my life because you know even though um uh, it's gonna sound like a brag 
but I score pr pretty well in the IQ tests and I'm a really good problem solver and I'm really good at so many things, maybe too many things that I'm just, I, I hadn't been able to focus on one thing. Um, ADD, but anyway, it's not that I was a ditz. It was wheat, in particular for, in my case. Um, when I don't have wheat, it does not happen. Uh, the clarity in my thoughts and uh, recall is just, oh wow, you know? Um, so that's another side effect of, um, of that, it being irritable, mood swings. Uh, sometimes it's like, I just wanna cry. And yeah, okay, I'm going through menopause. So some of that's that. So I have to you have to be sure. So that's why I have to test and go. Okay, I'll I'll try that again in a couple of weeks and see what happens. And it doesn't happen. So it's like okay, that was just menopause. Um, I used to never cry at movies, but now it's like commercials could make me cry. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. I, I'm I'm okay with that. I, I'm I'm happy about that actually. Uh, if you can't tell, I am. But the plan is a really good book. Another good book, because as I mentioned, food is um, not as nutritious as it used to be. So um, I do advocate using supplements and not just um, blindly using them. Try, you know, make sure that they are benefiting you in some way that you can obviously tell. Another good book, Diet Cure. Okay. Uh, Eight-step program to rebalance your body chemistry and end food cravings, weight problems, and mood swings now. <coughs> it says, feel better in 24 hours naturally. <coughs> it has a lot of uh, questionnaires. And oh, so it's like all this stuff. And it's not forever. Okay. It's for... Um, a certain time period you take these supplements because like when I first did this it was like oh my god it was like $150 that month I spent on supplements and uh, and but it wasn't for just that you know one month was $150 a lot of that stuff carried over for two or three months some longer so uh, I did that investment and it did help uh, with a lot of things because you're trying to get your body back to what it was before you damaged it with crazy diets, yo-yo dieting and stuff. That's what it addresses. And a lot of uh, nutritional imbalances we have in our, in our whole food system. So I strongly, uh, the plan and the diet cure are good books to, um, to get, to read. You can get it from the library. I don't, you know, I know if your budget's tight like mine, um, you can't always buy it. And I like to do a book giveaway on one or the other of these later, but that's another video. So, uh, I think a lot of people have these food intolerances and, and sensitivities, especially if you're experiencing wild mood swings or feeling anger when you shouldn't. And it's like, you know, really, this is not new. Or and you want to think, oh, okay, I just reached my limit. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something you just ate. A lot of these reactions are pretty, um, not so much immediate, but not too long. They're not, those reactions aren't going to happen two days after you ate. You know, in my case, it wasn't two days after I ate the almonds. It was almost um, within a few minutes of eating the almonds. So I kind of I limit that. Um, almonds have some very good health benefits. Uh, maybe I can eat that when I'm on a road trip by myself. <laughs> Uh, but um, those are things that you need to look out for in case you have that. And if you can't get the blood work done, that I'm going to link in the description below about uh, getting the blood work done and have 34, 134 things tested. Uh, you may want to get the plan and the diet cure book. Uh, the plan, I don't think there's one book out there that's going to be it for everybody or anybody for that matter. And it certainly had that work for me. It's like, you know, this, this part really helped me in here and this other part helped me in there. And, and I'm trying to put it all together to figure out the Vivian diet plan. So I hope this helped and I hope this uh, explained some of the things with um, what a food sensitivity or intolerance might be. 
and the re possible reactions that you could get from that. So from extreme cramps to bloating to diarrhea to constipation, you know, different ones will have different effects on you, to um, mood swings, to anger, to uh, brain fog or um, being ditzy. You know, maybe your friend isn't a, an airhead but needs to cut out something. It could be weed, it could be something else, and they may be a lot more intelligent seeming afterwards. So, I hope, again, I hope this helped. Uh, let me know what you think, and if you have one of these books, would you, if you've read it, let me know what you think of that too. So, thanks for watching.